there's a book that is the result of, I think, six different volumes on color theory. It was put together um, in the 1930s originally by a Japanese kimono designer. So he was a kimono designer, an artist, a teacher, and he did a lot of work on color theory. I like this book because of its design and all the colors inside that I'll show you in just a minute. So I thought today I would share it with you. I don't know Japanese, but you can see here it <laughs> says something. I think this character might be related to color based on the Chinese. There's more Japanese here and it's called a dictionary of color combinations. That's what the back looks like. I can't read any of it. <laughs> the cover has this flap on it um, made of kind of wax paper. And then the inside is full of colors with amazing names. So, to start, I'm going to show you the, the different sections as I understand them. Well, there's an introduction. Those are the years that he lived. My understanding is that these are the original volumes where he did his color theory work. So what's so interesting about his work is that he paired very interesting colors together. And in a lot of cases, they are colors that might seem strange combined to Western eyes, if you will. But that's why I like this book so much. There's really interesting color combinations that uh, I don't see very often, and they're just so interesting. It, they make me think. So, some more text in Japanese. Then there are pairs of colors that I will come back to and read to you in a bit. And the third section is full of triads of colors. So three colors together. Then the fourth section has quads of colors together. There's some really beautiful ones. I think this one is so beautiful. And this Sulfur yellow color is unusual, I think, um, with these others. At least I've never really seen anything like that before. Or this one. It's so beautiful and so unusual. And then this part is a glossary of the colors. 
So here you can see how to make the colors and the name in Japanese and English. And I honestly have no idea what these numbers refer to. I thought maybe they were page numbers, but then I tried it out and these colors weren't on these pages, so I'm unsure. And then the best part of this book is in the back. Basically, it's a bunch of tabs of colors that you are meant to cut out. And then with those colors, you can experiment by yourself so you can make your own color combinations. I haven't cut them out yet because <laughs> this book is so beautiful, but I believe this book is available as a PDF online somewhere. I think I saw it. So maybe one day I'll get the PDF and play with the colors that way. And then in the back, there's just footnotes and, um, not footnotes, there's ads for other books and objects. Oh, here's more information. So it was originally six volumes of color theory by, excuse my pronunciation, <laughs> Haishoku Sukan. Shoku Sogan. Um, that they were published in 1933 and 34. So then they combined those six volumes to make this book. Um, what's so interesting is that combining colors wasn't really something that people did before. So. He did a lot of great work for color theory. And then this Sans Owada was the kimono designer I mentioned before. So um, I'm not sure what the relationship was between the two. The original, this book. This book is from Sans Owada. So they were both very important to color theory. Okay, so let's take a look at these pairings of two colors. This one is English red. Cerulean blue. They're almost, even though it says red, they're almost complementary colors. This red is very orange. So I feel like I have seen this color combination before. Here's another sort of complementary pair of dark Tyrian blue and yellow orange. Over here is a really strange combination of pale lemon yellow and law sienna. This is red violet and Isabella color. It's a strange name, I think, Isabella color. Violet, violet, red, dark citrine, cinnamon, rufous. created by someone in 
name for someone named Isabella. I've never heard of it before. Let's see. That's really beautiful and warm. This is La Siena and Vermonia Purple. Here is Naples Yellow and Spinel Red, which is pretty pink. If you ask me, these two colors remind me of spring. This is like a nice lemon sherbet, but a bit duskier. There's something like meaty to it. Here's grayish lavender and benzol green. Pale King's Blue, Van Dyke Red. Oh, this one's so beautiful. Dasky, I don't know what that means, but Dasky Matter Violet and Fawn. These two colors look like the pink and the blue that you would use to decorate a children's room. Let's see if there's anything else that stands out to us. Ooh. Corinthian pink and slate color. So a slate color that ruins my theory about Isabella. But it's really beautiful. It's like a, a muted black or a washed black. So you can see with these bears that some of the combinations are a little strange, but still beautiful. This one's so girly. I love it. Aconite or asinite, ac aconite violet, and Corinthian pink again. Corinthian pink is not far from millennial pink, I think. Oh, that's so nice. Seashell pink and lemon yellow, which is interesting, right? Because seashell pink is so neutral. And lemon yellow is neon. Old rose and white. White. I don't know what this is in Japanese, but I know that this is also white in Chinese. They're so interesting. I love the reds and blues together. Oh, look at these blues. This is green blue and turquoise green. They're beautiful together. It's an interesting balance of complementary colors and very similar colors, like two blues together, or these two colors are very similar um, in darkness, in tone. This is Haze Russet and Dasky Matter Violet. Dasky Matter Violet keeps standing out to me. <laughs> Maybe I should paint my room that color, <laughs> though it's rather dark. This is beautiful. Seashell pink and deep slate green. Let's see what else. Black here. And grenadine pink. And here you have two browns. Brown and Van Dyke brown. Red and pink together. Oh, that's the end of this divinity. 
search this section out is Cameo Pink and Pompeian Red. So now on to the triad. Let's see what's here and if we recognize any of the colors from before. So this immediately caught my eye. They're so pretty together. Coral red, taupe brown, lemon yellow. They're so rich. Here we have English red, peacock blue, and law sienna, like from before. These combinations I love. Salvia blue, sulfur yellow, Cossack green. This down here. Eosine pink, light mauve, red violet. And here's the red violet again with scarlet and dull viridian green which to me does not look very dull. It's quite vivid. This looks like summer to me. Golden yellow, Venice green, and lemon yellow. It, it looks like summer. It looks like a Target ad for something. Maybe not, I don't know. This is so pretty too. Orange, black, and rosolank purple, which is quite pink. It's interesting to see two basic color names in this book side by side. I wonder who named these colors. Turquoise green, Van Dyke. Red and spinel red. This one looks like Halloween and autumn. Deep slate green, orange, and olive ochre. Ochre is very autumnal. <laughs> and this is also so summery to me, or actually like spring, I think. No. Eosine pink, orange yellow, citron yellow. Down here, it's basically the primary colors, but this red is called carmine. Carmine yellow and blue, like that. I'd like to see carmine and red side by side to see what the difference is. Here's the primary colors, but muted, I feel. Pansy purple, olive ochre, and Olympic blue. Like, this is so interesting. I don't like it, actually, but I wonder what the thinking is in putting this khaki color between calamine blue and grayish lavender, which have similar tones, I think or seem to be from similar families. Down here we have Raynette Green, Old Rose, Lilac. Up here, Turquoise Green, Antwerp Blue, Apricot Yellow. This Taurus Lake sounds like a spooky location with spinel red and cameo pink, like cashmere color. Let's see what else. Oh, that's really nice. Corinthian pink, warm gray, and pale lemon yellow. And then below it, because this is so faded, there's a really vibrant triad of rose along purple, orange yellow, and red violet. I love this triad because they all seem to 
maybe mauve colors. That one is almost the color of my nail. It's taupe brown, grayish lavender, and Corinthian pink. This turquoise green is really beautiful as well. I also wonder how these colors were used in fashion and kimonos and all of that. Let's see what else. Pinkish 
cinnamon, slate color, burnt sienna, turquoise green, olive yellow, old rose, dull violet black, apricot yellow. This one, deep slate olive, light brown drab, drab like my nails, Nile blue, and blah sienna. Purples with browns and black, so pretty. This is really cool. Cobalt green, cobalt, I don't know why that word is difficult for me. Cobalt green, deep slate green, pomegranate purple, green blue. Here's salvia blue, turquoise green, orange, and pale lemon yellow. This is pansy purple and hermosa pink, neutral gray, Sudan brown. I like those colors because we haven't seen them before. <laughs> Seashell pink, black, ESIGN pink, yellow green. This seems similar, this combination, but way more vivid. In that there's pink screens and black. Though this one has a seashell pink, which is much brighter. This one is spinel red, dull violet black, olive, and rosalong purple. Here's lilac, maple, cobalt green. Again, I can't say it. Cobalt. Cobalt, cobalt green, and Eugenia red. And here, Eugenia red again, sea green, apricot yellow, and dusky green. Let's see what stands out. Oh, that dope brown sort of purple color. Love. So many beautiful colors. <laughs> this one looks like summer in the Mediterranean to me. Calamine blue, cream yellow, grenadine pink, turquoise green. Oh, Naples yellow, peach red, natural gray. Deep slate olive. Nice greens on this one. This one is very neutral. Olive, pinkish cinnamon, deep slate olive, and sulfur yellow. Let's see what else? Ooh, golden yellow. Eupidorium purple, sulfur yellow, and grenadine pink. Cinnamon buff, citron yellow, black, and matter brown. The matter browns and the matter brown violet. I just love it. Okay. Deep slate green here. Naples yellow, Eugenia red, yellow ochre. Let's see what else we want to know about. Oh, this one looks like a butterfly to me. Slate color, cream yellow, grayish lavender, again similar to my nail, and Gotinka. This store 
Forest Lake, Violet, Carmine, Black, and Layla Pink. here the glossary I think I'll just read some of these mauve colors and maybe the dark ones because that's what I like here's our friend Hermosa Pink Corinthian Pink Cameo Pink Fawn Light Brown Trap I'm trying to see which one matches my nail the best? I think light brown drab of all of them is the closest. So my nails are drabby. Here. Brown. Haze russet. Van Dyke red. Fancy purple. Pale burnt lake. Violet red and Vistoris Lake, which we just saw in the quad section. Again, this turquoise green is gorgeous. And then here we have the tabs to play with. Maybe these colors um, refer are referenced in the in the glossary. Maybe these colors are these refer to colors that this color was matched with. So cerulean blue with O1. What is that? Hermosa pink. Yeah, it was definitely with one of those. What else are we familiar with? We're super familiar with Corinthian Pink. Okay, 27 is not the best. Hydrangea Red. We didn't see that one, but it could have been paired together. Check one more. Um, Cameo Pink 101. At the bottom here, pencil green. It definitely was with that color somewhere. <laughs> I think that's what these numbers must be referencing. in this book will 